I don't generally do uh, van life building on this channel, but I do live in a van and I am a van lifer and I think it's important that I share a little bit of it. Uh, last time we covered heating and heating and ventilation. Uh, air conditioning is not a thing yet. It's still winter time. Uh, coming in February here. The next thing that is probably a priority is power, power and electricity. The this this bus that you see here, I don't know how many feet long it is, to be honest with you. I think it's like 38 feet, 40, 30. I don't think it's quite 40 feet, um, but it has a lot of room inside. This is, um, I guess we'll call it a primal build. Um, I often wondered, like I started van life a little while, a little while back. I had an 18 foot trailer, a travel trailer to begin with. Then I got a 28 foot class B RV. That was like the half van, half RV thing. Um, then this happened. $500. Holy God, it doesn't settle until they get And that's something I had always considered. What happens if you lose your home? But then again, that's something you think about in any case. Uh, in any case. I've learned since that accident that I need a secondary form of residence. For that, for the piece of land that I'm going to buy, I'm going to build one a very, very small little... Um, what do you call those shed houses? I mean, really small, uh, probably in the area of 18 feet, like the travel trailer. Not very big at all, probably even less than that, and like 10 feet. But something you can stay at in case something bad happens. And in this case, um, this this kind of what this is. So I, I guess I'm going to call it, um, you can consider it sort of a primary build, but also a primal build or also an emergency build. What would you do if something happened to your van today? And that's kind of what this is. In reality, that's what this is. Uh, something bad happened and now I'm building this thing, which was the, the, the next planned step anyways. But it came about in a way that was kind of traumatic <laughs> at the same time. Uh, and in this case, getting the basics set up. Uh, I've got heat. I bought a um, Chinese diesel heater, a wood stove, and uh, the bus, the actual heat from the bus itself when it was a commercial unit. Um, but what about electricity? Well... When I when I went to recover my uh, my stuff from the the wrecked RV, I I recovered two of my solar panels, two of a uh, battery tender solar panels. I bought one from O'Reilly's and the other one I think I got from Walmart. The O'Reilly's one is fantastic. It's waterproof. You can add it on the exterior if you want to. For me, it's just in the window. Uh, the and then. The next, the very next thing I did was I went and bought two more batteries. Now, a lesson I've learned along the way with electricity is batteries and who you buy them from. <laughs> I bought, for some reason, I went and bought batteries from O'Reilly's, AutoZone, and Walmart. So I went three years on three different types of batteries, which is a bad idea. But I wasn't paying attention and I bought, I forgot what store I bought them from. So I went and bought a bunch of different batteries from a bunch of different stores, which kind of gave me a, uh, an idea of who gets good batter, who has good batteries. Best batteries, long story short, it's going to be Walmart. Next down is going to be O'Reilly's. After that, do not, absolutely under no circumstances for your personal car, for your motorcycle or your truck, do not buy AutoZone batteries. I'm not sure what the story is. They are subpar at best. Uh, um, I shop for batteries, lead acid batteries by warranty. 
Uh, Walmart has the best warranty, they have the lowest prices, and they have the best durability. The Walmart batteries, when I finally went through my battery system like three years later and started and one of the batteries had gone bad, it was the AutoZone battery. The O'Reilly's batteries per, were probably at about 60 to 70%. The, the, the Walmart batteries were fine, were absolutely fine. And they were fine until the truck rolled over. I don't know what happened to them after that. I went to the hospital, but after they rolled over, they were fine up until that point. So almost four years in. And and I, I, I can't argue with that. I really can't, especially when uh, lithium batteries are so expensive. And I didn't want to get the lithium batteries right away because I had a house to build. So for electricity in this particular case, I got the uh, I got two more lead acid batteries from uh, Walmart. The three year warranty. What's the part number on that? Uh, part number is going to be can't see max with two x's 29 c max 29 c they are a great battery to get started with or to replace something with or to add additional batteries for something else for me my battery system is going to be um very separated uh there's going to be batteries below there's going to be batteries <laughs> i'm separating into three different zones i learned that from the rv too uh there's going to be four batteries in the kitchen uh kitchen office area there's going to be two batteries up here in the living room and there's going to be uh two batteries in the bedroom so those two batteries technically are going to stay there but the 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 idea is to add flex, add redundancy. And I learned that the hard way. Uh, when you have it all in one big pack, like there's gonna be four batteries for the living room and the kitchen because they're gonna draw the most with the TV and the computer and stuff like that. But the living room never really uses much electricity and the bedroom doesn't really use any electricity at all. But back to the, the, the survival primal build or beginner's build, uh, the 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 two two solar panels that I got are keeping those two batteries topped off pretty good. Um, they they never drop below eleven, um, but they go up to fourteen. But I, I'm very I have to be very careful about where they are pointed because they are small. And other than that, that's my electricity for the moment. And I have it is a great start. It doesn't look like YouTube wants everything to look. I'm not wearing a bikini. Um, and, and, and that really shouldn't matter because it's what works. And this works. If, if, if your lease is up, your landlord sells your apartment, and you have to move out for one reason or the other, or your RV rolls in Winslow, Arizona, that's a good way to restart or start altogether. $200 worth of batteries from Walmart. Uh, two of those. Get two. Don't get the one from Walmart. Get the one from O'Reilly's. I don't know the part number for it, but it's a bigger one. But it has its solar controller and everything built in, and it's weatherproof, so you can mount it outside if necessary. And it'll keep two batteries charged up, so you can charge all your stuff and be ready to go. I mean, yeah, those, 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 uh, those what do they call those? Solar generators are great, too, but this setup I got for 300 bucks, um, a solar generator. I don't know how much they cost. And sometimes you got to move faster than what the delivery guy can bring. But so it is an option. I'm just saying. Any questions?